Hi, welcome to another tutorial. I was I was in the process of uh, coding up how to do formations and I wanted to make a little formation UI and I was just going to do it, you know, like quickly in, in blueprints and I thought oh, it was probably a good opportunity to show how you can create better uh, better UI sort of. So I wanted to set up a little data-driven UI to show how that can be helpful for you down the track and, and later on when you're setting up more complicated stuff with even more data. So, and we're going to do the widgets in uh, partly in C++ and partly in the Blueprint widget editor. So we're going to start by creating the C++ classes. And we're going to need two. So I'm just going to base them off the user widget first. Um, what will happen later is one of these will inherit off the other. So we'll just create these quickly. And, and this first one's going to be our base. It's going to be a button widget. So we're going to create a, a custom button widget. And you can, this will be like the base class for any button that you want to create. And you, you'll see why it's useful later. So I'm just going to call it simple UI button uh, widget. And I'll put it in a UI folder for now. And the second class we want to create is, this is going to be a child of that button. So we, we want to create one, one for a formation button. So it would, again, it will just be based off user widget. It'll actually inherit off our simple UI button later. The, so we'll just call this one uh, uh, formation button widget that in the UI as well. And the good thing about having a, a UI base for your, for your widgets is it makes it easy to interface with your other C++ classes later. And we're definitely going to see that when we start implementing formations. So this formation widget, the first thing I'll do is fix up these errors. The first thing I'll do is change how it inherit it. So gonna, it's going to inherit straight off this simple button instead of the user widget. So we don't need that include for this user widget anymore because it's getting it from our simple UI button. So starting in the in the button, we're going to need public, and we're going to have a native on initialized override. And this is where we'll set up our, the, the things we need for the button. Uh, now, th these, the next few things are what you want to have on your button. I'm going to include just sort of like the standard things you'd normally have on a button. You know, a button <laughs> and uh, an image. So if you're going to use a material for your uh, button, that, that you'll, you'll probably want to have an image. It's, it's, it's a more convenient way to do it rather than trying to put the image on the button. And we'll have a text block. And, and with every instance of this button that you use, you don't need to use all of these, but it's going to be the base button, right? So we just, we put everything on the base button and then we create a subclass. Why isn't that giving me an action menu? That shit itself, right? So we just need to put those includes in. Oh, sorry, the class references. Um, and the last one I'm going to put in here is this itself, because I'm about to create some delegates for the uh, the delegates for this this button, and it's I want to I want to actually pass a reference to the button itself, so it just needs that there. So it's not if I take that out. So what class? Because the class is declared down here. Um, you could put these down the bottom, but I find if I put stuff down the bottom, I'd never find it. <laughs> so I'm just going to put that there to stop that error. It it'll probably build without it. it it's it's fine. It'll just annoy me having read there. So now we need to uh, create a, a variable for those delegates. This one. Oh, I did button twice. My bad. Yep. So that's the the delegates. I'm going to add a button index, and this will be useful for making like determining a difference between what button is clicked. And again, that'll be shown later. <laughs> uh, and these will be the this is what the the delegates will file implement all those. So in the um, native on initialize, we just want to bind those buttons, sorry, the button to these events. And we don't have to use all these events, but they're there anyway. So what they're going to do is when the button is clicked, it's going to fire off a delegate. So the, if anything wants to use this button and bind to it, it can just bind to the delegate and it'll get the broadcast. And this is where I'm going to add in the button and, and the button index. So that, that index that we defined, and it'll send that th 
through the delegate to whatever's talking to this button. And then, and that's how we can say, so this is zero button, this is one button, this is two button, this is three button. So they're different buttons. That's how we identify that. We'll just do that for all the events. You, you won't often use the hovered and unhovered. And sometimes you will. If you want to update material uh, parameters, that you'll probably use it. Like if you've got a hover parameter in your material that you're using on the button, then you'll probably use these. And that's all. That's all we need for the for the base button for now. So that's it's just set up a simple button that we can talk to and identify different buttons. And it's an alternative to using the button inside the widget editor. You kind of see why that's this is helpful. This is useful. You're gonna see a lot of stuff later. <laughs> so now we're in our formation button. There's not a lot that we need to do in here, but we're gonna this is where you add the specific features you want for a particular button. So we've got our base button now. This is a, a type of button. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do because we need some data for this. So I'm going to, in here, I'm just going to duplicate this enum and I'm going to make a formation enum. So I'm going to call this line. Uh, what have we got? Some other formations, column, wedge, and the tactical blob. So these can be anything, right? These are just this is just a way of determining different formations, and in and in our example here, different buttons. So now in the formation button, we want to we need, we'll need a constructor, and we need a pre-construct in this one, not to on initialize. So this is, that's so it updates in the editor while we're changing the settings, rather than runtime, and we'll need to include that data. So just include your data file. You could put the enum in here, but we're, we're going to use it other places. So that's why I have that separate data file. If you've watched the RTS movement video, link up the top right, then that's why we have that AI data file. So we can just include it wherever it's needed. And now in the, so yeah, we'll uh, generate this. So in here, this is where we just, we want to set some information and we've got access to our parent button now. So we can set the button index to the the integer of the formation enum. So if we go back to the enum, if we've set it to line, then that's going to be zero, and that's the, the button index would be one. And if it's column, it'd be two, and wedge three, and blob four. Sorry, two. I went one ahead. It'll be zero, one, two, three. That that's what will get passed, and that'll be the button uniqueness. And this will update it just by selecting the formation. Um, and the other thing we can do is we can preset the text based on what formation we choose. So that's getting the, the formation and it's getting its display value, which I think by default is just whatever the enum name is. But you can do the, if you want to have different display names to what the enum is. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I think it's U, U meta. And then you just do um, display name. So you're setting a property on the, uh, um, like that. So, oops, that should be in quotes. So, we'll, you can set that for each one if you want to have something different. We'll leave that in and see if it comes up. Um, and that's it. That's that's our our button set up. So, we're going to go into the editor. So now, back in the editor, we're going to we'll create a UI folder. And in here we'll create a, so we want to create our formation button. So we go to user interface, uh, search for our button. So there's our simple button, our formation button, creating a formation button. I'll we'll just call this formation budget button. Open that up. And now we'll add, we'll add a overlay just to put everything in. And then we'll, we need to name things exactly how we named them in the uh, C++. So if I just minimize this, we go to our simple button. So we need to have, because we're using this bind widget, it's automatically going to look for a button called button and an image called button image and so on, wherever we use a widget binding like this. So we're going to need a button, an image the text at minimum. So if I try to build now, you see these errors, cannot find button, button, cannot find button image of image type, cannot find button text of text type. So this needs to be called button. 
and they don't need to be variables. We can tick that off. Let's go back to full screen. Um, they only need to be variables if you're going to use them in blueprints. So this is going to be a uh, button image. And this one's going to be button text. So now if I build, all those errors are gone. Uh, let's change this to desired. And now what we'll do is we'll put a scale box around each of these. Actually, we'll make them all stretch first. By default, because we're not going to be using this brush for this example, I'm just going to put it to uh, so it's see through. And I'm going to drop the text size to 12. Oh yeah, there you go. So you, you can see that's grabbed that display name coming through. Anyway, before we mess with that, I'm just going to add a scale box to these. Um, the text. So now I'll center the text and center it. And the image, stretch that. And the button, stretch that. There we go, that's back to this one out. All right, so that's that's our button. And now you can see here we're getting our formation and if we want to change it to column, it's going to automatically update it. So let's let's make a quick little, let's make a, another, like we'll use them in a play or a, a formation selector. So um, use a widget. W form formation selector. Uh, so we'll do the same. Add an overlay. Uh, we'll add a let's go horizontal box. And then here we'll go to our user created and we'll find our formation button. And we'll add this in. We'll put this desired again. So if we just control D to duplicate this. I mean, we had four formations, so this first one will be, our oh, second one, sorry, will be column, wedge, and blob. And to fix these up, I'm going to add a size box to all of them. And I'm going to set a min desired width and height. So, um, uh, what do we got? Width 100. And then the min height will make it 50. Yeah, we don't really want the text to scale, do we? It looks pretty crappy. But this is the good thing about this. You can come into your button and you can just take this out. Save that. And bam, our, our whole Everywhere we've used this button in every widget is updated. They look a bit squashed. I'm going to add, actually, that was the first one. It's going to add some padding. There we go. I think. Uh, yeah, we're going to make this from 50. They're all the same. And yeah, not the prettiest buttons, but they're uh, they're working. And then here we go. And now, when we if we have a look at uh, our button here, you can see the button index. So the line formation is zero. Is one for the column. We don't have to even set it. It just sets from the. We could actually make that, you know, not visible. But it's good to be able to see here. So later on, we can we can part when we click the button, we can pass to whoever wants to listen to it for a button click and we can tell you tell which formation we're trying to select. That's all I've got now. In the upcoming videos we'll we'll use our little formation button here to set the formation of our units as we move them around. Thanks for watching.